Good morning, I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. Let's start with the latest on the speakership fight on Capitol Hill. So far, two Republicans have announced they're running to replace Kevin McCarthy. House Majority Leader Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan, who leads the Judiciary Committee and is running one of the impeachment inquiries into President Biden. Matt Gates, the Florida Republican who led McCarthy's ouster, says he'd be happy with either one of them. I'm eager to hear their plans and their vision, but if the House of Representatives goes from the stewardship of Kevin McCarthy to either the stewardship of Jim Jordan or Steve Scalise, that's going to come to the delight of many conservatives and certainly many of the Floridians that I represent. Congressman Gates tells Bloomberg he opposes further aid to Ukraine. Scalise has voted for it in the past, but Gates says that would not be a deal breaker for him. Hear more of our interview with Congressman Matt Gates on the Bloomberg Talks podcast. Well, Nathan, the infighting on Capitol Hill has President Biden calling for an end to what he calls poisonous politics. You know, we have strong disagreements, but we need to stop seeing each other as enemies. We need to talk to one another, listen to one another, work with one another, and we can do that. The president is urging House Republicans to work with Democrats on a spending bill to avert a government shutdown next month. Former Speaker McCarthy says the president did not communicate with him enough during past budget negotiations. Biden says any conversations wouldn't have fixed problems in McCarthy's own conference. Well, staying with politics, Karen, former President Donald Trump has raised more than $45 million in the third quarter for his campaign as he capitalized on publicity from his legal woes. This week, Trump's been appearing in a New York City courtroom for the civil case, accusing him of overstating his asset values and lying about his wealth. And he blasted New York Attorney General Letitia James. I'm stuck here because I have a corrupt attorney general that communicates with the DOJ in Washington to keep me nice and busy. Attorney General James is firing back at Trump. This case was brought simply because it was a case where individuals have engaged in a pattern and practice of fraud. And I will not sit idly by and allow anyone to subvert the law. And lastly, I will not be bullied. And so Mr. Trump is no longer here. The Donald Trump show is over. This was nothing more than a political stunt. New York Attorney General Letitia James accuses the former president of inflating his assets by billions of dollars a year to dupe banks and insurers. While staying in New York, Nathan, the trial of FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried is underway with the spotlight already on those closest to him. And Bloomberg's Shanali Basak is covering the case. Over the six-week trial, dozens of high-profile testimonies will include Caroline Ellison, Bankman-Fried's former girlfriend, and investor Anthony Scaramucci, whose firm had taken money from Bankman-Fried's firm. They are expected to testify with dozens of others. And the defense still says working at a startup is like building a plane as you're flying it, and that no one one CEO or person can be everywhere while managing such a fast-rising firm. Remember, FTX had almost 6 million customers at its peak. Bankman Freed may spend most of his life in prison if found guilty. Bloomberg Shanali Basic says Bankman Freed is accused of using billions of dollars in customer deposits at FTX for speculative trading, as well as for luxury real estate and for political contributions. All right, Karen, let's move west to legal news out of California. Private testimony in the Justice Department's lawsuit against Google will be released later this week. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has the story. The judge says the testimony from behind closed doors of the CEOs of Apple and search engine DuckDuckGo cut to the heart of the antitrust suit. Sources say the two held discussions to have DuckDuckGo replace Google in the private mode of Apple's Safari browser, but that Google used its size and its wealth to pay billions of dollars to keep Google in play. It is expected the information will be released later this week. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Radio. Right, and thanks. Well, staying in California, there's some optimism over the Hollywood Actors Strike. Both the union that represents the actors and the Association of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which represents Hollywood Studios, have met for a full day of negotiations. Talks are scheduled to continue tomorrow. Turning to markets now, the route in treasuries that sent shockwaves through the global bond market appears to have subsided, but uh, still, Barclays says global bonds are doomed to keep falling unless a sustained slump in equities revives the appeal of fixed income assets. Bill Gross, co-founder of PIMCO, says the bond market is, quote, a little oversold. In an interview with Bloomberg, Gross also took aim at retail investors, saying they've helped to scare the market by acting as, quote, little bond vigilantes. 
They've been uh, spooked over the last uh, week or so by declines of two, three, four, five percent in their ETFs, and so I, I think they're joining the crowd in terms of selling. And you know, we're we're seeing a little bit of an oversold market here, headed to five percent. And you can hear our full conversation with Bill Gross on the Bloomberg Talks podcast. Well, in corporate news, Nathan, shares of Clorox are down almost 5% this morning. The cleaning products maker is still reeling from a cyber attack that disrupted production. Now it's forecasting a sales decline of as much as 28%. Prior to the attack, Clorox had been expecting mid-single-digit organic sales growth in the quarter. And AT&T is exploring options for its multi-billion dollar stake in DirecTV. AT&T co-owns the pay TV provider with private equity firm TPG. Nathan, thanks. Time now for a look at some of the other stories making news around the world. For that, we're joined by Bloomberg's John Tucker. John, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Karen. A notorious group of hackers blamed for recent breaches on major casino companies is also suspected of being behind that recent cyber attack against Clorox that we just heard about. Let's find out more on the attack from Bloomberg's Charlie Pellet. Sources tell Bloomberg officials suspect that Scattered Spider is responsible for a breach that Clorox first disclosed in August. Bloomberg News has previously reported that the same group, known for its so-called social engineering tactics, was tied to attacks on Caesars Entertainment an MGM Resorts International in recent weeks. Scattered Spider hackers specialize in targeting call centers and IT help desks, impersonating employees to trick support staff into coughing up information to gain access to accounts. In New York, Charlie Pellet, Bloomberg Radio. President Biden detailed $9 billion in new student loan relief, saying it would provide a boost to the U.S. economy. By freeing millions of Americans from the crushing burden of student debt, it means they can go and get their lives in order. They can think about buying a house. They can start a business. They can be starting a family. The administration's latest steps will bring relief for 125,000 borrowers through changes to programs intended to aid public servants, Americans with disabilities, and low income. Ukraine says air defense forces down 24 of 29 drones launched by Russia from Crimea to attack southern and central regions of the nation. Meantime, Turkey preparing to host a third international gathering of national security advisors working to build support for a peace summit that Ukraine wants to hold this year. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and other top officials from the Biden administration are in Mexico. They're discussing shared security issues. Latest round of talks brings together Blinken, the Attorney General Merrick Garland, and the Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, among others. And Dubai has cemented its status as the world's busiest market for luxury homes, with buyers pouring $1.59 billion into high-end properties during the third quarter. The property consultant Knight Frank says the number of sales for homes worth $10 million or more reached a record 277, putting the Emirate firmly ahead of cities like New York. Global News 24 hours a day, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg. Karen. All right, John, thanks. So we bring you news throughout the day here on Bloomberg Radio. But now you can get the latest news on demand whenever you want it. Subscribe to Bloomberg News Now to get the latest headlines at the click of a button. Get informed on your schedule. You can listen and subscribe to Bloomberg News Now on the Bloomberg Business app, Bloomberg.com, plus Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Time now for the Bloomberg Sports Update. And here's John Stashower. John. Karen, they play best of three in the wild card series. And all four teams who won game one also won game two. So all four series are over in sweeps. That includes the Texas Rangers, who hadn't won a postseason series since 2011. They won 7-1 at Tampa Bay behind the pitching of Nathan Avaldi. They outscored the Rays in the series 11-1. Minnesota moves on, beating Toronto 2 to nothing. So the Blue Jays only scored one run in the series. Sonny Gray and five relievers teaming on the shutout, and the Twins get their first postseason series victory since 2002. In Game 1, Arizona in Milwaukee trailed 3 nothing, came back to win 6-3. In Game 2, Diamondbacks were down 2 nothing, won the game 5-2 to behind Zach Gallen, who was a 17-game winner in the regular season. And the Phillies beat the Marlins 7-1. to Aaron Nola went 7 innings, did not allow a run only three hits. The division series begin on Saturday. Texas will be in Baltimore. Minnesota will be in Houston. Arizona will go to Los Angeles to play the Dodgers and the Phillies 
will be in Atlanta. NFL, a couple of players who signed as free agents just a year ago, no longer with those teams. The Chargers have traded cornerback J.C. Jackson. He goes back to New England where he spent four years and won a Super Bowl and was an All-Pro. And Denver released pass rusher Randy Gregory. He had formerly been with Dallas. The 2030 World Cup is expected to take place for the most part in Morocco, Spain, and Portugal, but also in three other nations. John Stashauer, Bloomberg Sports. From coast to coast, from New York to San Francisco, Boston to Washington, D.C., nationwide on Sirius XM, the Bloomberg Business App, and Bloomberg.com, this is Bloomberg Daybreak. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager. Republican Congressman Matt Gates of Florida says he backs speakership bids by both Representatives Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan. Gates tells Bloomberg's Joe Matthew and Anne-Marie Horder the person isn't as important as the plan to cut government spending. I'm for both of them right now. I'm eager to hear their plans and their vision. But if the House of Representatives goes from the stewardship of Kevin McCarthy to either the stewardship of Jim Jordan or Steve Scalise, that's going to come to the delight of many conservatives and certainly many of the Floridians that I represent. Uh, But it's not just about the person. Uh, Both of these folks are honorable men. It's about the plan they have to reduce spending. We sit atop a $33 trillion debt. We're facing $2 trillion plus annual deficits. And I I am worried about global de-dollarization. I see what's going on in the African Union, where more of those countries are using local currency when they're selling natural resources. I look to a lot of the Gulf monarchies and energy producers in the Middle East that are moving away from the dollar and toward the yuan. Matter of fact, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Iran uh, just in August joined the BRICS system, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa system, to de-dollarize. That with the latest Reuters survey showing that economic analysts now believe that in 2024, you're really going to see a cooling off of the dollar. So I believe we right, have but to a have lot of governance critics say, and a plan. A lot, a lot of critics, sir, do say, though, an expansion of BRICS, though, means it actually dilutes it. They cannot coalesce around anything, and that actually helps the fact that the dollar will remain the primacy currency on the global stage. I, I wonder. I think that it not it, that is not a linear progression, right? Because as BRICS becomes more institutionalized, uh, you could see more and more good. I mean, the, the real worry about BRICS is the movement of natural resources outside of the dollar as the global south continues to develop and pack an even larger punch in the economy. Uh, you know, I think that the downgrade from Fitch was largely driven by the fact that there's no real backstop to spending. So here's what we need, no matter who's the speaker. We need a top-line budget that at least in the House of Representatives returns to pre-COVID spending levels, and then we need to be able to have single-subject spending bills with open amendments to have programmatic review of agency spending. Well, Congressman, let's talk a little bit about what just happened. Nobody's ever done this before. Uh, It it was history-making, the ouster of of the speaker. We're told that you are the least popular man in the House of Representatives, or at least in the Republican conference. In fact, just yesterday, your Republican colleague from New York, Mike Lawler, suggested violence against against you in an interview right around this time yesterday. I'd love for you to hear what he said and have you respond. Here's Mr. Lawler. The only thing that I would have done differently is flung it in the direction of one person. Uh, Look, he absolutely epitomized uh, the frustrations of uh, the conference uh, and the American people. Was that person Uh, from Florida you're suggesting? We need to get, oh yeah, I would have hit him square between the eyes. He was going to hit you square between the eyes with the speaker's gavel, he was suggesting, Congressman. Uh, Do you expect to be expelled from the Republican conference? Oh, I I don't know. I I think that that was a a very frustrated person who's having to come to grips with the stages of grief. My mission is to ensure that the House of Representatives runs better, because the way we've been running Washington, D.C. for the last 30 years has led us to a point where no one is really responsible for the spending. We are backed up against shutdown politics. We are governed by crisis. And the biggest problem is lawmakers have to take one up or down vote on continuing resolutions and omnibus bills to either fund or not fund the entire government. That truncates the type of thoughtful and serious um, uh, you know, analysis that we have to apply to how the federal dollar is being spent at a time like this. So I'm not much for political violence. I don't want to hit anybody. If Mike Lawler comes at me with a gavel, I'm not entirely sure that would concern me, but that's not the direction I think we ought to go. Mm. I think we ought to maybe craft a budget before an attack strategy. 
Well, you know, Kevin McCarthy says this was personal. He spoke uh, about this at length yesterday that he's seen texts, he said, involving an ethics probe against you. Congressman, what do you know uh, about the, the status of this investigation? Have you been called to appear personally? No, I haven't. I've answered all the questions I've been asked, and I am the most investigated man in the United States Congress. I have been cleared by the FBI, the DOJ. The Federal Elections Commission had a 5-0 vote to clear me, and the people who told vicious lies about me two years ago are now sitting in federal prison for being part of a criminal uh, fraud scheme to shake down my family. So I don't fear any investigation. I have never asked Kevin McCarthy to assist me in that matter, and sometimes Times people try to make policy failures personal because those failures are so personally embarrassing to them. So when Kevin e. McCarthy talks about this conflict being personal, I think it's more projection than a sober analysis of where the House stands. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington, Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM Channel 119, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.